Hey everyone, Kyle here from Poseidon's Pet. So today I went to our Southwest Aquatic Society meeting. There was an auction and I got some more shrimp. So I got some more shrimp, I got some sail sails, I got some snails and I got a couple plants. So what was cool was I've never seen these before. See if you can see them. Yeah, it's not focusing. But what it is is it's a, a spike tail snail. So they're pretty cool. Uh, small little guys. I want to create kind of a small terrarium, uh, aquarium, whatever you want to call it. But I wanted to add these guys to it as well as one of the members had given me a rabbit snail as well as a baby trapdoor snail. So I want to create this little, you know, uh, container for them that I can set up and just let them do their thing. So we're going to do that today. But like I said, I got new shrimp, so I want to show you guys what we got. I'm going to go ahead and get them drip acclimating, get them thrown into a breeder box so that way you guys can see them, and then we'll get right into it. But first, let's go check out that bioactive enclosure, whatever you want to call it, terrarium, enclosed aquarium, uh, filterless aquarium, a jar with some sand and plants in it, whatever you want to call it. Let's go build that real quick. So what we got here is one of those new ball aquariums. Yeah, these guys, these guys are awesome. You know, got a little bit of sand in there from the 60 gallon. So what's nice is this substrate is gonna be bioactive. It's gonna have stuff in it that's gonna help to create life in this jar by itself. Because it was already in an established tank, it's gonna have the beneficial bacteria. It's gonna have little microorganisms. What I did was I just added some RO water to this as well as a little bit of the tank water. And then I'm gonna to top it off with the uh, remineralized RO. So it's gonna be a softer water setup, but not, not like a Caradina tank. It doesn't have a buffering substrate. So it's gonna have a little bit of some minerals in there, but nothing too crazy like, uh, like our tap water here. So yeah, like I said, we got these spike tails. Let's see if I can get them to focus now because these guys are really cool. Yeah, apparently if you put these in a tank with predators, they grow long spikes on their shells. So it's pretty interesting. So we're gonna dump these guys on in there and let them do their thing. I'm not sure what kind of plant is that. It kind of looks like some moss, like some hair algae almost. I'm not quite sure what it is. Yeah, I'm just gonna dump these guys on in there. And then Give them a little swish just to get them unstuck from the glass or plastic, whatever this container is. Come on. Let's give them a little shake. They'll be alright. Snails are pretty tough. And then the other thing we have is a baby rabbit snail, baby trapdoor snail, plus miscellaneous floaters. So we're gonna add all of this to our little enclosure we made. And then I'll probably add some moss too. Looks like a nice piece of water lettuce. Just dump all that in there. Whatever's in there is going in there. Looks like some guppy grass as well. Put that in there, why not? And we're gonna see what happens. So inside my crystal tank, I have a plethora of moss, just kind of floating around, all kinds of different moss in there. So we're gonna put that in there. Now, I'm sure some of you have kind of caught on to what may happen. If you know anything about rabbit snails, we'll see how long these plants last because rabbit snails are herbivores and they will decimate a tank. Hence why the ball jar. So I can't add these to any of my aquariums because they will just decimate any plants I have in there. So they get their own enclosure. They get to do their thing in there and we'll, you know, we'll check on them in a little bit, see how they're doing. And then we'll go check on the shrimp too. So the Southwest Aquatic Society here in the Phoenix area meets every Sunday and sometimes they do an auction where 
you know, you could bring stuff and everybody can auction it off to purchase. So Mike Coleman, the AZ shrimp guy, he is my local shrimp supplier. He mentioned that he was gonna be bringing some stuff to the auction. So I let him know like, hey, I want some pintos. I purchased 10 black pintos from him and then he put five in the auction, which I was able to purchase along with all of those plants. But if you're in the Phoenix area looking for someone local for some shrimp, you know, hit up Mike Coleman, AZ shrimp guy. He's, he's got a lot of tanks, he's got all kinds of stuff. He's got Neos, he's got Caradina, but I'm super happy with these Pentos. They look really nice, and I'm excited to add them to my existing colony. I'm really hoping that they are going to be able to uh, breed with what I have, because like I've mentioned before, my tank I have is it's very male heavy. So I'm hoping that some of these turn out to be female, but we'll see how it goes. You never know with getting new shrimp because it's it's always up to the supplier to pick them. And a lot of times they're unsexed juveniles, so you're not sure what you're gonna get. But if you get anywhere from, you know, 10 to 20, chances are you're gonna get a mix of males and females. But definitely excited for these guys and I can't wait for them to start breeding so I could see some of the patterns I've got because I have some really nice looking shrimp in this tank. Look how gorgeous that looks. So that's about 24 hours later. I didn't feel like recording anything after I set it all up last night. But got the floating plants in there, a little bit of moss, piece of a almond leaf. So these guys are gonna do okay. They'll just hang out here. What I'm gonna do is put this right here with the moss grow out. So that way it can still get some light and they'll be able to do their thing. So just fed them and they are ravenous. These guys are loving it in here. I already saw a few of them uh, pairing up. So hopefully we'll get some berries here soon. But these guys are gorgeous. Absolutely amazing. Can't wait to have some babies. So it's been a few weeks since that video. You guys got a sneak peek of the moss grow out. More to come on that. Let's go ahead, check out that jar, see how it's doing. So things are always evolving and moving in the shrimp room. But you can see there's a little piece of wisteria in there. And it looks like that wisteria is growing like crazy. The guppy grass is doing good. Snails are still doing good. Getting a little bit of a, what looks like some cyanobacteria because there's no, no airflow or anything. I'm tempted to throw this in my new Neo tank, just toss everything in there, but haven't decided yet. I may keep it going. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys want me to keep this experiment going, keep it running, or if I should just mix it in one of my tanks. But let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys liked this week's video. Do me a favor, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought, as well as hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything. We're on the road to 5,000 subs, so definitely sub if you haven't. Hit the bell, that way you're notified of my future content, like moss grow out, stuff like that. Eh, eh, eh. Shrimp are still doing good. Uh, got some berry or a buried female in there. My pintos, they're male heavy. I've probably got 95% males and one female. So uh, she's buried up. We'll see what happens. Hopefully she makes it through the whole experience and is able to release some babies and get me some more females. So we'll see how that goes, but definitely stay tuned and thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, 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 bye.